All right, let's talk about seven easy passive income streams for artists. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm always a little cautious around the words passive income, right? It all sounds a bit too good to be true. And that's because, let's face it, for a lot of these income streams, there's quite a bit of work to do up front, and some of them may even need some ongoing maintenance as well. So I hear you say, Sophie, how is that passive income? So we want to get really clear that there's a couple of types of, of income. Well, you've got your active income, that's something that you're doing, like you're making art and you're selling it. That's an active income. But something like a membership or Patreon or something that you get paid every month, that can be recurring income. You've still got to do some work for it to appear, but it's going to happen every month so long as you keep going with the work. And then passive income, we all have this dream of lying on the beach looking at the phone with all the notifications and suddenly you get paid for things that you haven't really done any effort for. So this is what we're looking at today setting up passive income streams as part of your solid profitable art business. Now in a minute I'm going to share how I see the passive income and I'm going to share those seven income streams I think are worth looking at. Some will work for you, some won't work for you, but I think it's a really good idea, especially in uncertain times and choppy waters ahead, to actually have definitely more than one income stream, but to have a mixture of active, maybe recurring and passive as well. Okay, before we dive into those seven different passive income streams, let's just have a quick word about the word. Let's have a quick word about the word. Let's just chat quickly about passive, that word passive. That really implies that you're going to do nothing. I want to be really, really clear. Some of these income streams are going to require you to do virtually nothing. Others of them are going to require you to do a few simple tasks once and then you're going to reap the rewards thereafter. Some of them, however, are going to need quite a bit of upfront effort in order for them to actually get to the place where they're passive. So let's take a look at all of them and then you can see which ones are going to float your boat. Now, I would love to hear from you in the comments as to which ones you are going to do. So as you listen to these seven, make sure to leave me a comment below and say, Sophie, I really love number two. I'm going to take action on number three. I love and I'm definitely going to take action on number six. All right, here they are. Number one, easy passive income stream. Well, you likely click through them in order to get through and watching this video. Yes, if you have a YouTube channel, then don't forget that you can get monetized. What does that mean? That means when you hit the criteria that YouTube have for you, that's 4,000 watch hours, it's over 1,000 subscribers, and there's a couple of other criteria as well. Once you get monetized, that means they're gonna place ads on your videos, and every time somebody clicks on an ad, then you're gonna get a very small amount of money for that click. Now, when you first start out and you first get monetized, you're gonna be looking at your bank statement and you're gonna say, Sophie, I'm not a millionaire yet. But with time and as your follower count grows, you definitely can have an income stream of a few hundred or thousand dollars or pounds every month, which can definitely be very welcome as you build your art business. So that's for you if you're building and actively building a YouTube channel and you want to focus on this platform. The second passive income stream, which again, a bit like YouTube ad, you just kind of need to meet the criteria and tick the box and off you go. This one, there's a little bit more work, but not a lot. This is affiliates. So what do we mean by that? We mean that, for example, if you teach painting and you use a specific brand of art materials that you really, really love, you can get often get an affiliate code that's a code or a link from the company that you buy those materials from. And for example, Amazon, the Amazon affiliate program is quite large. So if you know that you've got a lot of followers and those people would like to buy materials or books that you recommend or um, equipment that you use, you can set up affiliate links. So when they click through that, you're gonna get that tiny payment. So again, there's a little bit of effort looking at the things that you perhaps might want to recommend and setting up an affiliate program. For software and things like Amazon, you just join the affiliate program and follow the instructions. And it's usually a link that you then would copy and paste in your emails or below your YouTube videos or out on social media. But you could also actually approach a more local business and say, look, I'd really like to set up this win-win situation 
could you provide um, a code or some, something to use on your website or again YouTube or any of the platforms that you use so that when your audience buys those things that you recommend, you get a tiny percentage of that. So again, a little bit of work up front, but definitely can be a really good income stream the further along you go. Number three passive income for artists is a type of digital download. So that's creating something like an ebook or an e-guide. So again, if you teach um, and you want to make a simple guide or a simple PDF book or an ebook or even a book, anything that somebody can digitally download, you're gonna do that work once. And yes, here comes the upfront work, right? You're definitely gonna to need to do the work to create that digital product. But once it's up on your website, people can go and buy it and download it themselves. So you're gonna get that payment um, and you're not gonna be around. You're gonna be on that mythical beach, all right? Sipping away on a nice gin and tonic, lying on the sands while somebody else is purchasing your digital product. So definitely think about, is there something that you could create online that's a digital download? Now we know in this world of, of digital downloads generally, there are a lot of different options. So I only mention e-guides because that's something that I'm familiar and have done in the past. There are myriad ways of creating digital downloads. Think about calendars and planners and stickers, and there are endless different things that you create once, somebody pays and downloads, and you get that money as a passive income stream. Number four, of course, is print on demand. Now, there are a lot of artists doing print on demand, some doing it really well, others not so well. So really think about whether this is a good strategy for you. So if you have graphic design skills, or you are more of a designer or a pattern designer, or you create things that are easily translatable in the digital world, this is going to be very easy for you, and you may already have explored so if you have some artwork already, some illustration or a pattern or something that fits very well to a product, then you should definitely look at print on demand. So you find a suitable third party company and then you upload your images, you choose which products you want those images to appear on and then you set them up on a storefront, either your own or something like Etsy as another third party. Then you can drive your audience to that platform where they then can say, oh, I love that particular illustration and I'd love that today on a duvet cover, on a pillow, on a notebook, on any of the things that you've chosen. Right now, again, it's not gonna make you a millionaire overnight, I promise you, but bit by bit, it all adds up. Imagine if you have a couple of active income streams and you now have a couple of passive income streams. So when you start to look at how much money you've made at the end of the year, you've got all these different places where the money's come in. And some of them, like I say, you've created that artwork, perhaps you're selling that original artwork, or why not use it for something else as well and create another easy income stream. Number five is back to those people who are great at teaching. So that is creating an online class or one-off lesson or an online course. So something that again is not gonna be an easy, quick thing to create in the first place, but once you've created it and you set up the systems to make it evergreen, that means somebody can buy it all the time rather than you having to do a live launch, which is a lot of time, energy, and effort. You can actually create that course. It can sit on your website. There's a sales page right there. Somebody can go there, get all the information they need, purchase the course, get sent your email and their login details can start and take the course. And again, you're in the studio, taking a walk in the park, on the beach, you're doing whatever it is that you want to be doing because you've created that as a passive income stream. Yep. So there is a fair amount of upfront work. This is probably the biggest one. This is the one that's gonna take the most of your time. But again, imagine if you had one, two or three key courses sitting on website and you were driving people to that website and they were signing up. That could become quite a good income stream for you. Now, of course, I have some resources for that. Don't forget to see links to other videos on creating online course below this one. So definitely, if you've got that course that you made, I don't know, earlier this year or last year and you've done nothing with it, consider turning it into what we call, as I say, an evergreen. That means it's always open and someone can always buy it. And of course, there's a bit of a marketing strategy that you'll need for that for sure but it's definitely possible to do and is a great form of passive income once it's all set up. 
Number six is art licensing. So for those of you who are already illustrators or have creative work that you would like to get licensed onto products by third party companies, then you'll already be familiar with this and perhaps you're already chasing down some licensing deals. So you've got to create the artwork, but if you're doing that anyway, um, this is another great income stream. Again, caveat, not gonna make you a millionaire overnight, but you never know what company might really love what you're doing and say, hey, we would like to put your images all over next season's bedding, curtains, cushions in say a really well-known interior design store. You just don't know, right? So all of these things, as I say, each on their own, probably not gonna make you the millions, but together they can definitely add up to a full-time income as an artist. Will you need a bit of work up front? Well, we've already established that a lot of them are gonna need some prep work for sure. And last but not least, number seven. I don't know if you've considered this. For those of you who create original artwork, what about leasing that art? All of that art that you have gathered at home or in the studio that's not selling, or you're actively not out there selling it, it's kind of stockpiling. Well, what about actually leasing it? Companies don't always want to buy work. They quite like to lease it because that means every season or so forth, they can change and have something new on the walls. So there are places that will do this for you, or you can contact some companies and say, hey, would you be interested in leasing my work? So again, that's gonna pay you some money. It's probably gonna be more recurring income than passive, but you've created the artwork. So essentially it kind of is passive income. It's a little bit of everything, right? It's passive while it's hanging on somebody's wall and you're getting money for it. It's definitely recurring because again, like all of them, they're likely gonna be coming in every month, this one particularly, and they're active if they say, oh, do you know what, we would like to buy that. <laughs> so in a way, that's a little bit of jumble of all of them. But I, I don't know, it's not as popular as it used to be, but I know a couple of people here who do that. You've got to do a little bit of work, to, of course, to make the contacts and get out there and get your work into the right places. But consider it, if you haven't thought about that and you're sitting on a pile of work, I wish, then that is a really good um, income stream to consider. If you've loved this video and you really want to find out more ways to make money and you're saying, Sophie, give me more ways to make money, then check out the video that's currently on the screen and that's the perfect one to watch next. That's 20 best ways to make money in 2023. Now, if you're watching this after 2023, I reckon that's going to work pretty well as well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.